Welcome to the $137 Gaming PC Benchmarks video. First of all, thank you for all the support that Computer Build got, all of you on Reddit and all of you on YouTube. I appreciate it so much, and I'm not gonna waste any more of your time. Let's get straight into it. I got a lot of questions about what games can this PC run and how well does it run them? Can it play PUBG? Can it play WoW? Can it run Overwatch? But can it run Crisis? 150 frames on Dota 2 on high settings? I call bull and I benchmarked almost every single game that you guys asked for, but based off all of the games I was able to benchmark, you should be able to tell if this computer can play your game or not. Let's start with World of Warcraft. This was one of the games that I actually had absolutely no issues testing in terms of any graphics level I did. On good settings, it was getting 45 frames per second on average at 1080p, and on high settings, it was only getting around 25 frames per second. It didn't look like it was dropping anything at all. The gameplay, from my experience, was really smooth. But then again, at the same time, I'm not exactly super picky when it comes to hitting that 60 FPS like everybody else. Overwatch. Pew, 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 pew. I actually don't play this game at all. I was able to borrow a copy from my friend and I had absolutely no expectations. I thought this thing would not run at all and if it did, it would run low and it would lag the entire time. However, much to my surprise, Blizzard has actually found a way to optimize this game incredibly well and you can tell from the benchmarks. On average, Overwatch got 45 frames per second on medium settings and around 31 frames per second on average on high settings. I loaded into a quick game for the very first time and I actually played pretty decently, I think. I don't really know what's good or bad, but I did win, so... So when I did load into the game, I accidentally set it to low settings and capped the frame rate at 30 FPS, but from seeing how consistently it was staying at 30 and not dropping anywhere below that, I can tell that at low settings during team fights, Overwatch is more than playable. And honestly, I didn't see that big of a difference from my perspective from low settings to high settings. So this game is awesome to play on this computer build. Now onto EVE Online, another game that I actually have never played before in my entire life. On medium settings, I was getting about 28 frames per second on average. On high settings, I was getting about 22 frames per second on average. And on low settings, I actually jumped up to 45 frames per second. Now, as I was playing, I didn't really understand what was going on, but I tried to make the graphics card work as hard as I could by zooming in, zooming out, and scrubbing around and seeing what I could do. But the gameplay felt pretty smooth. The only time it got choppy for me is when I tried to push the graphics card too much on the high settings, but this game was pretty playable and I didn't really see any gaming issues from my end. World of Tanks. Honestly, I never understood why this game even exists. Like who took the time to make an MMORPG about tanks? On high settings, World of Tanks actually got 29 frames per second on average. When I set it back down to medium, I actually got up to 43 frames per second, which was really nice and really comfortable to play on. And when I set it on the maximum settings, it dropped all the way down to 20 frames per second on average. And at that point, it was getting pretty choppy and it was not as fun to play. Now, I really didn't want to benchmark Crisis, mostly because I knew a lot of you guys were memeing it up, but I like memes too. So I actually did benchmark Crisis and here are the results. I loaded into the game and the game actually defaulted me to high settings for some weird reason. And I could already tell as I was parachuting into the first mission, I was lagging a little bit and the game actually crashed. So I guess you could argue that this computer does not run Crisis. However, when I got back into the settings the next time I loaded the game up, I turned the motion blur off and it was the last time the game ever crashed for me. At medium settings, I was getting 36 frames per second on average and I dropped down to 29 when I put the settings back up to high. And like I said before, if you keep the motion blur on, this game will crash with this specific build setup. <sighs> I spent $20 so I could benchmark that game. And now for CSGO. This was the best performing game out of all the ones I benchmarked in this video on this computer. I ran CSGO at the highest settings and I saw a 62 frames per second average. Now that said, when I loaded up MSI Afterburner to record how many frames per second I was getting in CSGO, I didn't realize that I set the cap to 60 frames per second. So I can't see exactly how many frames I was getting above 60. I know that I was getting a minimum of 60, but my guesses from what I could see visually is that I was probably getting close to 70 frames per second and that MSI Afterburner score of 60 that you'll see on the screen during the gameplay is not exactly accurate. It did occasionally drop down to the mid 50s, but it never got any lower than that, no matter how intense the game got. Except maybe for the time I ran through the smoke. 
but that's expected. And as for Dota 2, I saw a lot of you calling me out saying that there's no way this computer was getting 150 frames per second on high settings. And you're right. I set Dota 2 to the highest settings and only the highest settings and it averaged 35 frames per second. I was looking at the footage and playing Dota 2 for the first time I'd add and I was getting no problem playing the game. I personally didn't see any drops and even though I didn't understand what was going on, I could enjoy the gaming experience and not be set back by the hardware that I was gaming on. And now for player battlegrounds unknown. I'm gonna tell you first and foremost, there is just no way that this potato of a computer should have even been able to load this game. I tried loading this game in at 1080p for the first time and I swear I heard the graphics card laugh at me when I tried to. However, as you can see on screen, I was able to get the game working and it was actually playable. This computer's running one of the newest games today. But this is what happened. I had to drop the resolution all the way down to 1280 by 720 p and drop the game settings to very low. I'm not saying that because the graphic settings were very low in my opinion. I'm saying that because there is literally a setting in PUBG that says very low for graphics. On average, in game, I was getting 20 frames per second with a peak of 29 frames per second and a low of eight frames per second. The game looks playable in the footage I'm showing you and to be honest, it kind of is. The only catch is when you parachute in, you have to sit still and wait for about a minute and a half for everything around you to load in so you don't get the infamous marshmallow buildings glitch. So if you can manage to survive for 90 seconds without moving, then you can actually play PUBG on this computer. And those are all the benchmarks. I'm sorry if I didn't get to your game. I know a few of you requested Rust, but I honestly didn't have another $20 to spend since I already spent the $20 I had on Crisis. And if you can't tell, the guy who's building $137 gaming PCs doesn't exactly want to spend any more money than he has to. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I did. You should stay tuned for the next upcoming budget build. It might be happening really soon because I might have found something interesting on Craigslist and I might have expectations to build another $150 gaming computer that can actually play PUBG. So subscribe and look forward to more content. And as always, have a good day.